in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the gift, through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. Hallelujah. Pentecost Day today, the second most important feast in the Christian calendar after Easter. And so, as we prepare to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us call to mind the times when we have failed to love God and neighbour as we should. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, Fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the Apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven, and at this sound they all assembled, each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya round Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The Word of the Lord. The response to the song, Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord my soul. Lord God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your riches. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You take back your Spirit, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. 
You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. <clears throat> Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same Spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always to the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways in different people. It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because of all these parts, though many, make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one Spirit we were all baptised, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one Spirit was given to, uh, to all of us to drink. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle them, kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, for those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Well, the clue is in the name Pentecost 50 days. Pentecost falls 50 days after the day of resurrection. The feast itself is of Jewish origin and for the Jewish people it was the feast day when new members were welcomed into that faith. And so it is fitting that the Christian Pentecost commemorates the day when the mission of Jesus invested in his disciples is made concrete with the descent of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes down so that his disciples can begin to fulfil the Lord's injunction for them and us to go out into the whole world, making new disciples, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ amongst all peoples and in all nations, which is why the Feast of Pentecost is often referred to as the birthday of the Church, second only to Easter, a little bit ahead of Christmas in the hierarchy. Birth, death, resurrection, ascension, and now the descent of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, having descended upon mankind is now our tangible link with the Godhead, the Holy Trinity, the Holy Trinity which we will celebrate next Sunday. 
and the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Holy Spirit, of the, of the Holy Trinity, is our tangible and material link with that wonderful Holy Trinity, the source of all love. And it is the Holy Spirit that empowers us with those gifts that St Paul enumerates in our second reading, all parts of the body coming together to make a whole person, all members of the church coming together to make a living, breathing, thriving church. Trust. Jesus asks us to trust him. He asks us to trust in his promise and the promise he made was that he would not leave us alone, that he would send the advocate, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. We were promised and we have not been disappointed. Thinking about it, only the sin of pride can really threaten that relationship between a promise and trust in that promise. That is why our Christian Pentecost can be seen in terms of a restoration of the relationship between God and human beings, which was literally undermined in the events in Genesis 11, when, as you will recall, the proud men of Babel desired to build a great tower, thinking foolishly that they could try to reach God in his heaven to be as good as God, pride. And of course, pride comes before a fall, and that tower surely fell. And those proud men of Babel were scattered throughout their world. They were stripped of their common language, and they could no longer be mutually intelligible, speaking nothing more than a baby-like babble to each other. But at Pentecost, that scattering, that removal of unity has been restored. We see that uh, in the account of the multitude of foreigners from all corners of the known world who were gathered in Jerusalem. They all spoke different languages, but they heard the disciples speaking in their own tongue. We distill that common language, that common tongue, as the unifying voice of God. And it is a voice that calls us to embrace all those around us in the project of love, love for all human beings, drawing them all into the love of God, made manifest in his son Jesus Christ, a love that was bought on the wood of the cross. Human language falls very short of being able to even partially express the fullness of God's love. But it is a language, the language of love, that we can all learn to speak. It is not a foreign language, it is our true language. And we can learn to speak that language however provisionally, and we speak it in our lives, in our faith, in our worship. And that must be our ongoing challenge in these challenging times, our opportunity, our way of living, living and speaking the language of love. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name, 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Alban, St. Francis, St. John, Henry Newman, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Pope Francis, and Norman, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. <clears throat> Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat>